To the courteous, this book contains notes of nature mediums I believe to anyone else but myself. You're perfectly welcome to read them. However, I don't say I didn't want you. Came upon me one day that the backs of these cigarette packages were blank paper and good paper and, uh, you know, heavy paper. So I said, why couldn't you cut those up and make a you know, make a book out of them. You know, I'd never written a diary before, <laughs> Dear Mrs. Jones, or anything like that. But uh, it got interesting. September the 9th, he photographed and interrogated. Pretty tricky, these Jerry's. He said, well, I'll give you a cigarette if you'll tell me a few things. And he, then he wanted to know where we were, what our company's name was, I mean, what squadron and what all that stuff and of course we said name rank and serial number is all that we can give you then well that's too bad i'd sure like to give you a cigarette and he kept saying no sorry we can't do that and he says well too bad he closed or opened the drawer and pulled out a sheet of paper and had the whole damn thing <laughs> what's what we were where we were from, what kind of ship we were flying, <laughs> in the whole bit. And up early on the 20th, we were ready to leave by the set. Next stop was another transit camp. Four hours later, we arrived at once. We're marching uphill to a camp. And I'm looking at that, and I said, I bet I'll bet if I pulled out and stopped the train. The thing just got to me, I mean. And I just reached up and pulled that damn thing down like that. And pretty soon, we could hear them coming because the train had stopped. Oh man, did they ever start in? Who was it? Where was it? And they're telling us that you're going to be shot as soon as we get to our destination. We finally got to Stalag 1. Things went along fine. They just emptying the train and everything like that. And they came to our car and everything went fine. Nothing was ever said ever about that. The thing was, they had changed the guards, you see, on the train. Yeah, they got lucky. You know? And these Red Cross packages quit coming, you know? and we started saving bread and stuff like that. The Germans did come in with some roadkill. I was thinking about escaping. But I was a newcomer. Some of these guys had been there for two years, and they had plans that you wouldn't believe where they dug tunnels, I mean, and a lot of them dug some long tunnels, but they had to think of some way to get rid of the dirt that they were taking out of the tunnel. One of them was putting the dirt up in the attic of the barracks that we lived in, and then they started dumping in the, <laughs> the toilets. The Germans knew that there was something going on, I mean, they had this seismograph wire all along the perimeter of the outside fence, and they could tell us the dragon. Well, when they finally discovered one, why they they had it figured which way they were going, and they'd take a great big pole and drive down in the in the ground. <laughs> so the Gestapo came uh, came aboard. <laughs> why uh, they got pretty nasty, and they said that. Anybody caught digging a tunnel would be shot immediately. That's when the tunnel digging kind of came to a standstill. Creaky life is, is an odd thing for a person. I feel just a faint touch of old blues. However, I'm not contemplating Harry Carey or such because I'm here, I do do, I miss being out there tonight. night.